This is a great misconception for two key reasons. The first is these RCTs often relate to very narrow cohorts. The value trial is certainly an important study, but even important studies may present some issues and limitations. First of all, all these studies are talking about pure or uncomplicated or indexed patients with stress urinary incontinence. And unfortunately, the definition is not clear. So when is something uncomplicated? When there is stress urinary incontinence for more than three months without much residual urine, so residual urine of less than 150 mils after voiding, and when it's clear, clearly seen in physical examination. So when you look, uh, examine the patient and there is a urethral hypermobility and evident stress urinary incontinence, then it's uncomplicated. How many patients we see are really uncomplicated? If we look to the value trial, we could say around one third, 34% of the patients created were really uncomplicated. And almost the same uh, results come from, came from a study uh, we did uh, in Italy, uh, where 36% of patients were considered um, uncomplicated. And almost the same results also come, came from uh, a very recent uh, study published uh, from an Argentinian group where around 40% of patients were considered uncomplicated. All these studies were using the, the criteria uh, of the value trial. If you use stricter criteria as done in the past in two British studies, this number could be even uh, lower, around 10 or 5%, uh, as uh, shown in, uh, in papers by Di Gesù and Agur. Let me reiterate. The patients in this trial were patients with uncomplicated symptoms of stress incontinence. And in my practice, this is a relatively rare clinical situation. Since population, specifically in the industrialized countries, are rather getting older and with age, um, other health problems increase, including loner tract symptoms and dysfunctions, those so-called uncomplicated or easy patients um, are becoming rather a smaller group. The other limitation is about the, the primary endpoint uh, that, that, is, that was uh, treatment success at 12 months. And uh, uh, I think that probably a, a, a diagnostic test should be evaluated more on the ability to guide the, the following treatment choice uh, more than to uh, evaluate the, the, the outcomes of the of a, of a surgical treatment. They are in effect attempting to assess the quality or the accuracy of a diagnostic test using the success of a treatment. Uh, and you can see this is of course uh, conceptually problematic. For example, in the value study, uh, without doing preoperative urodynamics, you would miss that you serve overactivity or that you serve underactivity in a total of 56% of patients. In other words, the clinical diagnosis in that study was altered by preoperative urodynamic studies in 56% of patients. But Interestingly and surprisingly, this was not reflected in the outcome of surgery at 12 months. On the other hand, we know from the literature that both that you serve on, uh, overactivity and underactivity are poor prognostic factors for the outcome of stress urinary incontinence surgery. But unfortunately, the details of urodynamic studies were not given, and it was also not reported how the change of clinical diagnosis affected the preoperative patient counseling by the physician. And we do not know the outcome of that to serve overactivity and that to serve underactivity in that patient group in the long term. So in my understanding of good medicine, I would not skip a test which would change my clinical diagnosis in more than half of my patients. Another uh, limitation is about the, the decision making. It's, uh, it's difficult that uh, a, a test, a preoperative test, can change uh, the outcome if at the end uh, the surgeon will perform uh, every time the same uh, uh, surgical approach. It's, uh, it's illogical to suppose that uh, a pre-op test could uh, change everything, uh, anything in the, in the following uh, process if at the end uh, the, the, strategy, the strategy is not modified by uh, the results we have uh, from a test. 
When evaluating these studies, you have to be crystal clear about the technical side of how the study was conducted. And one of the key things is to make sure that the population sample is big enough to be able to detect small differences between populations. And then, of course, one of the key aspects that we are dealing with clinically is that these tests are about measuring the situation for an individual, not a population. And often patients who sit in front of us are not interested in general success rates. They want the individual what's going to happen to me question. And that can truly be only answered with urodynamics. And so you get a substantial difference at an individual level. Specifically, you will understand properly that person's mechanism of uh, symptoms. And not only that, you will get additional information about potential risk factors for bad outcome. Hence, these studies actually do not show and cannot be simplified to the conclusion, do not do your dynamics at all. Rather, or in contrary, they show uh, or highlight that each physician has to carefully consider who is actually treating with which problem and if he or she has all the information and proper indication uh, to proceed with the therapy in mind. If not, your dynamics are a valuable tool to provide more detailed information that helps to confirm or, re -inject or reject the initial treatment in a decision. So in summary, the published evidence needs to be reviewed with considerable care. And furthermore, the clinical context of treating an individual is a rather different one from the published evidence research basis. There is a wealth of observational studies which demonstrate the clinical utility of urodynamics, both in terms of directly uh, guiding and directing management, as well as giving us probabilities of success on an individual patient basis. So we should not disregard these prospective observational wealth of evidence uh, just because some RCTs have demonstrated um, that in very narrow bandwidth of patients that urodynamics may not make a difference in the outcome. However, this debate also shows that there is the need for clarification how we best uh, how we should best utilize urodynamics investigation in our daily clinical practice. <laughs>